Moses and Joshua not just represent two names in the Bible, but they reflect God's nature. They reflect God's character. They reflect also God's mind in preparing someone as per his calling. Lots of exciting questions. And we're going to talk about all these things which will impact your life. And not only impact your life, it will impact also the future of where you're heading. My name is Ashwin Dairiam and sitting with me is Brother R. Stanley, who has been a pioneer in mentoring and leading several people into God's work. Over 50 years of rich experience. Let's meet him and ask him a few questions. Uncle, it's a pleasure to meet you. That's so nice. The word Moses and Joshua, you've written a beautiful book. I've had the pleasure of reading it. I'm just quite amazed, not just reading about these two great characters, but also understanding the mind of God in preparing people. As we start this program, I just want to reflect on one thing. In your long years of ministry experience, speaking on several stages, preparing people, what is your understanding on the word calling? That's my first question. Now, I think this is the right place to start. Because unless one makes his uh, calling and election sure, that's the words of uh, Apostle Peter. He makes it um, in First Peter, I think. He says, make your calling and election sure. If you do not make your calling and election sure, you will become fruitless. You will lose your uh, focus and you, you will even forget how you were purged from your old sins, from your past life. So this is the point that I would like to first stress and I'm happy that you asked this question. What is the difference between calling and election? Because Peter uses the word calling and election. Now calling is basic for all Christians the same. We are all called to be his witnesses, to proclaim the mercies of his gospel and his salvation. That is basic for all of us. But the election is not the same for all of us, if you want to really differentiate those two words. Calling is general. Election is specific. We are all called to be his disciples. But out of those disciples, in the first uh, instance, Jesus chose 12. So fundamental difference has to be understood is what you are saying. Yes. He called so many people to be disciples. Mm -hmm. Out of them, he chose 12. Okay. So we can use that word technically, yeah. calling election. election. And he called them apostles, named them as apostles. If that is not clearly understood, we will be spreading too thin. Okay, so it's the foundation. That's the foundation. Uh, can I pause for a minute here? Yes, this please. Point? My question is more on, I understand God has called me. Mm -hmm. But how do I know whether he has elected me? Now, as you rightly said, he called many, but he chose the... the so how do I know is God choosing me? So it's a very thin line is what I understand. How do I make it clear for the viewers? Yeah, the point is, general calling is the same for all God's children. Right. Specific calling... Mm -hmm is the assignment. Mm. It's an assignment. He gives them a specific task. Yeah. You, you, coming back to your own life, Yes. I just want to reflect 50 years of ministry, but you are from IIT. Yes. You could have gone abroad, got a lucrative job, but something happened. How did you find this calling an election? From day one, I had an ardent desire to study and share the truths from God's word. Right. For that, this you could have joined the Bible college, but no, why are you? That, that started when I was a student in the Indian college. Okay. That was 1963. Okay. So whatever I studied in my personal meditation, right. I always was looking for someone with whom I could share. Hmm. And the moment I begin to share something, or even some pulpit assignment right. in the early stages, right. small churches and all that, everybody would say and recognize you are a Bible teacher. Oh, they would say. They would say. And, and you, I knew you, that you, I was teaching. Oh, you knew. Okay. 
So teaching by God's grace has been something that God uh, fused into my blood. So, okay, got it. My mummy was a teacher. Okay. A school teacher. Right. The two outstanding personalities who led me to Christ, one was my sixth standard teacher. The other was my chemistry professor. Mm-hmm. Again, so, both teachers. Teacher. Bo- always I had a fascination for teaching. Right. So that fascination got fitted into the biblical stuff. Right. So the moment I know something, I was looking forward to somebody with whom I could share. Right. And that um, pattern would be teaching. Teaching. Yeah. The come, style, style come, would be people. teaching. Now com- coming back to again calling an election, yes. I'm just trying to understand. So as you said, calling is for everyone. Yes. So viewers who are watching us right now, calling is for everyone. Yes, it is. But then, uh, this coming back to what you are elected or how does God choose that? This, uh, how do I? How did you sense it? Where was my interest specifically? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can do so many things. Right. You can distribute tracts. You can go and preach in villages. Yes. And you can join a convention. Lots of things you can do. Correct. But where is your special interest? And in which area you shine more than the other areas? Okay. Now, that's a very important uh, sign. Mm-hmm. You will definitely fare better in one of the four or five areas where you are keeping your feet on. Right. So that gives you an indication that God has called you or he has elected you or he has appointed you for that particular work. Is that, so when your own personal life, how sure were you that this is something which you enjoy and passionately do? And I just can't imagine in that era where people pass out of IIT, they go into a huge ambition. But you choose to do the things differently. I want the viewers to understand this very clearly. From a man who has lived or probably experienced 50 years of walking with the joy of understanding this word election. So I just want to get that clearly because I want to understand it well. Yes. Uh, and uh, is, there, is that a peace of mind you get or is it like situation? What, what's the big thing, you know, which says, you know, this is the thing. From day one of my uh, Christian life, that was my rebirth. That was on the 18th of November, 1962. Right. When I was towards the end of the pre-university class. Right. You do that just before you go to right. college to do your graduation. Correct. The first thing that happened immediately after my rebirth experience was, I fell in love with the Bible. Falling in love with the Bible. Yeah. And you said rebirth experience. Yes. Okay. Instantly, I fell in love with the Bible. And until now, it's about 62 years or so, I'm falling in love with the Bible again and again and again. Mm-hmm. I became a Bible addict. Mm-hmm. And the moment I opened the Bible and prepared even a short message, a short preaching of 20 minutes, 25 minutes, the notes I prepare that can go on for nearly two, three hours, but uh, my assignment at the time allotted to me is only 20, 30 minutes. Right. So I always have much, much more than what I can share during that stipulated time. Right. That means I keep on digging into God's word okay. and so much is coming up. So as you dig, the treasure is coming. Yeah, more and more. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is the only thing that will not be exhausted. Mm-hmm. See, I don't know whether you know these words. I'm sure you know it. It's mm-hmm. a very interesting words in Psalm 119, verse 96. Now, we don't know who wrote this psalm, but anyway, we'll use the word psalmist. Mm-hmm. I have seen the consummation of all perfection. But your commandment is exceedingly broad. I mean, you can't have any more adjective. He says, all the enjoyment and all the blessings and all the pleasures for everything, there is a limit. But for your commandment, it's limitless. Exceedingly broad. One lifetime is not enough. One lifetime is not enough. No, no, no. I think I would have understood the Bible just 5% during these 60 years. Mm. That so, it, it, that means in, in you, way, you are thirst. Yes, you thirst. Your inquisitiveness. Yes. But it's also scary because if... It's, if, it's scary? It's scary because... I'll tell you why it's scary. Because it's, when you say scary in a positive way, because for, for a person who has 60 years who have been doing it, and if you're saying 5%, what about the... I mean, there are... The, I know that I'm called. I'm not a deep 
I'm not a deep guy. I don't pray for hours, but I love the Lord. I want to do something for God. And I want to, you know, do something passionate for God. But uh, how do I ensure that I'm in line with God? That's my big question. The more intake the word of God in your life is, you will very much uh, automatically fall in alignment right. with it. It is God's work. Mm. I mean, we do our part a little bit. Like you read something and then this is what God says. I'm not doing it now, so I should change. So that's all there. there. But beyond that, when the word of God becomes part of you, you know, your thought process is different. Mm. Your words are different. Your very posture is different. And you know what to, for what you have to say yes mm. and what you have to say no. You are ruled mm. by God's word. But that length of and the strength of that rule of God's word in our life depends upon or directly proportional to our intake. Mm. So how much we consume? Mm. It becomes part of it. Not just knowing a few truths mm. here and there and for discipleship lessons. Mm. That's all okay. I mean, we need it. All the time we need it. You can never forget the multiplication ta table, whichever uh, course you study. Correct. Even in post-PhD, you need to remember the multiplication table. Correct. But you can't be always thinking of multiplication table. Correct. Exactly. There is no end. There is no end. If I am given another life, mm. I'll spend more time in studying God's word than preaching or teaching. Just lastly, before we come to the next question, coming, coming back to calling an election, this word election seems to be a, something very powerful. And there are many who are in that line of getting elected probably or they're called. They want to step into it. What would you tell them? Just as a beginning reference. In other words, what you are asking me is, basically they are called, what specific area they should step into. Exactly. As I told you, where is your interest? Where do you fare better? In which area do you fare better than the other? And there will be confirmation mm -hmm. from fellow elders. Elders. And seniors. Usually their confirmation is very important. Mm -hmm. Suppose I am with you for about uh, six months and I just watch you doing the ministry of doing so many things. I should be able to say, uh, Thambi, I think you are good in this. During our college prayer group, uh, eight years in the college, we used to gather every evening outside the campus because it was not a Christian college. Right. We had no place to pray. So we were gathering in the woods. Mm. So we were just about a dozen of us. Okay. I was telling one person, one of the students, God is going to use you in the area of mm. leading people into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Hardly he understood it, but later on, he became one of the mightiest instruments in the hands of God over the years. Hmm. I think he has led personally more people into the baptism of the Holy Spirit than anyone I know during my lifetime in South India. Hmm. His name is Brother Lionel, hmm. who was two years junior to me in the college. Hmm. Hmm. That's very interesting and yes, very powerful. Yes. So you are able to recognize, recognize. identify. Hmm. So. You should be bold enough mm. and confident enough to tell that youngster, mm. no, this is the area. Mm. You better concentrate on that. Mm. So that the witness of uh, fellow believers and fellow elders is very important. Mm. Normally, if you go by these three, where you fare better and where is your interest and what do the others witness, Usually, these three, if you align, you are safe. Friends, we are watching uh, Moses and Joshua, and I'm speaking to a person who is living his mandate on the word calling an election. Don't miss the next episode, which is coming up shortly.